Research on galaxies and other huge space bodies indicates that there are many mysteries in the universe that scientists are only now discovering. Many of these puzzles necessitate the development of new physics theories to help us comprehend them. For example, we need to figure out why gravity is so much weaker than other forces, as well as what happened before and during the Big Bang, and a slew of other outstanding questions. We've been able to answer some of our queries owing to technological advances, and CERN has continuously been at the vanguard of this tremendously exciting field. The CERN team of scientists has just made a groundbreaking discovery that will change the course of history. What did they discover, and how might it help us understand the universe? Join us as we study CERN researchers' astonishing discovery that changes everything. CERN's crowning achievement is the Large Hadron Collider. Following World War II, the European Particle Physics Laboratory was founded as a method of reconciling and reviving research throughout the continent. Scientists from six continents and more than 100 countries worldwide conduct research at the facility. You might be wondering what the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC, performs, and why it is so vital to scientists. The LHC combines two proton beams at unprecedented intensities in a laboratory with massive detectors installed in deep caves. Six research centers dispersed over the 17-mile, 27-kilometer ring investigate the results of these interactions. The ultimate objective is to understand the underlying components of the universe and how they interact. This is the purest kind of basic research on the topic. The LHC has not disappointed us. For years, scientists were searching for the Higgs boson, which was predicted in 1964 by scientists combining beliefs about two of nature's most fundamental forces. In the 1960s, British scientist Peter Higgs predicted that all particles, like marbles in molasses, would be pushed through a field of mass. Higgs predicted that this field would be accompanied by a particle, the source of mass for all other particles. It was called the God Particle in a 1993 book by physicist Leon Liedemann and scientific journalist Dec Teresi. Although many physicists, including Higgs himself, dislike the term because it is exaggerated and overly spectacular, after decades of investigation, two experiments in the LHC identified a new elementary particle in the nucleus of an atom in 2012 that was approximately 126 times heavier than a proton. Scientists then confirmed that this newly found particle was, in fact, the Higgs boson, less than a year later. The finding of the Higgs boson is the last piece of this puzzle, this theory addresses the interplay of electromagnetic, weak and strong nuclear forces, but excludes subatomic particles. Peter Higgs and Francis Angler were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2013 for finding the Higgs boson and predicting its existence. The Higgs boson was the standard model's missing piece, and its discovery changed particle physics forever opening previously locked doors. Jan Udise, the director of CERN's theoretical physics department, argued that the Higgs boson is important because it can transport and transmit an energy field known as the Higgs field, much as photons carry the force of the electromagnetic field. The Higgs field causes other particles to slow down, thereby adding mass, when it comes to mass, scientists have identified only one extra-large particle as a result of Einstein's theory of special relativity. So, we've only scratched the surface of what the Higgs boson is capable of. Discovering the Higgs boson was simply the first step. The last ten years have been devoted to testing it. The standard model of physics, on the other hand, gives a plethora of information on the predicted behavior of the Higgs boson. 
The LHC's goal is to put the standard model of particle physics, our currently best theory about nature, to the test at the shortest distances and greatest energies ever tested in the lab. One of its most difficult aims is to depict the strong force that binds the atomic nucleus together. The nucleus's protons and neutrons are made up of three little particles known as quarks. If the strong force were switched off for a second, all matter would rapidly collapse into a soup of loose quarks, a condition that did occur for a brief moment at the beginning of the universe. The theory of strong interaction, often known as quantum chromodynamics, describes how the strong force interacts with quarks by exchanging gluon particles. The gluon may be thought of as a kind of photon, a particle of light that carries the force of the electromagnetic field. Due to the way gluons interact with quarks, the strong force operates much differently from electromagnetism. For instance, separating two charged particles weakens the electromagnetic force, but separating two quarks strengthens the strong force. All of the stronger quarks are thus locked inside hadrons, which are comprised of two or more quarks and consist of protons and neutrons, for all eternity, until they are blasted open at extremely high speeds, as CERN is doing. All particles in the standard model have antiparticles, which are almost identical but have the opposite charge to their standard model counterparts. When you take a proton and pull out a quark, a quark is produced. The freshly produced quark will be absorbed by the proton. As well as a proton, you'll receive a new particle known as a meson, which is a quark-antiquark -quark pairing. According to quantum theory, which rules the universe on the smallest scales, particles can arise out of nothing. The LHC has discovered 59 new particles. These include new mesons and baryons. In addition to the recently discovered tetra-quark, these new particles all include heavy quarks. These tell us what nature accepts as a bonded quark pair, even if just for a short time. They also show us what nature hates. For example, why aren't there any unusual quark pairs? Another unanswered puzzle is how the strong force binds these particles together. In terms of size and shape, some theories say they are similar to the proton or neutron, while others claim they are similar to molecules comprised of two bound hadrons. Testing each newly found hadron allows researchers to measure its mass and other properties, providing information on the strong force's behavior. The more hadrons we locate, the better. The LHC's ultimate objective is to discover physics beyond the standard model. Despite its many triumphs, these models are crucial to that endeavor. The standard model of particle physics is far from the last word on the issue. It does not, for example, suit cosmological theories that describe the formation of the universe. One explanation is that the quantum spin, or lack thereof, of the Higgs boson may give insight into the origins of the universe. With the exception of the Higgs boson, every known particle possesses a quantum spin. This oddity was anticipated by the standard model of particle physics, so it's not surprising that researchers have persevered in attempting to measure the Higgs boson spin in order to test the standard model. In contrast to gravitational and electromagnetic fields, which have identifiable origins such as an object's mass or an electric current flowing via magnetic fields, the Higgs field has no known source. It is all around us, a pervasive, non-local element of the universe that runs through everything. As a result, it has linked the space-time vacuum, which possesses the same properties as the Higgs field, both lack quantum spin. But the vacuum is not inert. Quantum fluctuations force particles to come and go, raising the vacuum's energy level above its most basic state. The cosmos constantly wants to be at its lowest potential energy level. Our universe, on the other hand, is not the structure of what physicists call the energy potential of the Higgs field. 
The Higgs field is what keeps the cosmos from succumbing to its inevitable energy loss. The energy graph would look like a mountain with two valleys and hills on either side. The energy level of the vacuum will be contained in one of those valleys, but physicists have a strong hunch that there are deeper valleys on each side of those hills containing even lower energy levels, and the Higgs boson's mass measurement validates this notion. The particle size indicates that the Higgs field has room to decay to a lower energy level. Researchers have spent the last 10 years working to identify the Higgs boson's life duration as well as its spin. According to the standard model, a Higgs boson survives for just 10 to 22 seconds before dissolving into additional subatomic particles. This computation has not been experimentally validated, but scientists hope that the Large Hadron Collider's third operating session, known as RUN3, which began on Tuesday, July the 5th, will produce the long-awaited milestone. If scientists can estimate the lifespan and know how the Higgs boson separates into distinct particles, they may uncover previously undiscovered subatomic particles, including particles of mysterious dark matter. Because of the potential for these discoveries, the Higgs boson is a necessary tool for investigating the most perplexing parts of particle physics. Scientists say the Higgs boson is an extremely fine microscope for studying nature at the tiniest scales, as well as a formidable telescope for accessing physics at very high energy scales. Some have speculated that manipulating the Higgs boson may result in a number of science fiction situations, such as traveling at the speed of light or opening a black hole. Thankfully, that hasn't happened yet. But please do share your thoughts on these discoveries in the comments section below. And thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, then please do give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe and click the notification icon to keep up to date on all the latest activity on the channel. See you next time.